Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MathDBase.com Anacast series. I'm your host, John Kisiedu. In this installment in the Developmental Mathematics series, I will discuss percentages, part two, percentage increases and decreases. We will discuss three ways to find a percent of a number. In this context, the word of means multiply. In the first method, rewrite the percent as a decimal, then multiply that decimal by the number. For example, to find 3.5% of 3,500, rewrite 3.5% as 3.5 over 100, which is the same as 3.5 over 100, or 0 0.035, moving the decimal point two places to the left. So 3.5% of 3,500 will be equal to 0 0.035 times 3,500, or 122.5. Let's use this method to find 150% of 16. Since 150% is larger than 100%, we expect the answer to be larger than 16. 150% by definition is equal to 150 over 100, which reduces to 1.5, moving the decimal point two places to the left. So 150% of 16 is equal to 1.5 times 16, or 24. In method 2, we rewrite the percent as a fraction, then multiply that fraction by the number. Let's use this method to find 37.5% of 44 and 2 thirds. First, rewrite 37.5% as 75 over 2 percent. By multiplying 37 by 2 in the denominator to get 74, then add the 1 to the numerator. For a review of how to manipulate fractions, see our fractions series. Now applying the definition of percent, 75 over 2 percent is equal to 75 over 2 over 100, which is a complex fraction. We can simplify it by multiplying 75 over 2 by the reciprocal of the denominator, 100 over 1, to get 75 over 2 times 1 over 100. Since 75 and 100 have 25 as their highest common factor, the fractions reduce to 3 over 2 times 1 over 4. Multiplying the reduced factors, we get 3 over 8. 44 and 2 thirds can be written as 134 over 3 by multiplying 44 by 3 in the denominator to get 132, then adding the 2 from the numerator to get 134. So 37.5% of 44 and 2 thirds is equal to 3 over 8 times 134 over 3, which we can reduce first by canceling 3s and dividing 134 and 8 by the highest common factor, which is 2, to get 67 over 4 or 16 and 3 quarters, dividing 67 by 4. In the third method, find 1% of the number, then multiply the number by the given percent. Let's use this method to find 1 quarter percent of 6,000. Since 1 quarter is 1 fourth of 1, first find 1% of 6,000, then divide the result by 4. 1% of 6,000 is 1 over 100 times 6,000. 100 is the highest common factor of 106,000, so we can reduce that product to 60 over 1, or 60. So 1 quarter percent of 6,000 is equal to 60 divided by 4, or 15. As a general rule, since the decimal point can be written just to the right of the last digit of any whole number, to find 1% of any whole number, just move the decimal point two places to the left. As a second example, let's find 3% of 70,000. 1% of 70,000 is 700, moving the decimal point two places to the left. So 3% of 70,000 is equal to 3 times 700, or 2,100. To find a number if a given percent of it is known, divide the given number by the percent. Suppose that we know that 3 is 5% of a number. Thought of another way, 5% of some number is 3. In symbols, we have 5 over 100 times number equals 3. If we multiply the product of the 3 and percentage by the multiplicative inverse or reciprocal of the percentage, the fractions will cancel, leaving 1 times the number that we are trying to find. This gives the same result as dividing by the percentage. But as with fractions, when we multiply the numerator by a certain number, we also have to multiply the denominator by that same number so as not to change the value of the fraction. We multiply the 5 over 100 times number by 100 over 5, so we should also multiply the 3 by 100 over 5, so that the scale will remain balanced. 
On the left, we have one times the number, or just the number, and on the right, we have three times 100 over five. Since we can reduce 100 over five to 20, the result is 20 times three, or 60. So three is 5% of 60. A shorter way to approach the problem is to just divide three by 5%, which is equal to three divided by 0 0.05, to get the same result, 60. Francine received a 7.5% raise, taking her annual salary to $28,750. How much was she making before the raise? $28,750 represents 107.5%, 100% plus 7.5% of Francine's previous salary, which we will abbreviate as PS. So $28,750 is equal to PS times 107.5%. We can find the amount of the original salary by dividing the increased salary by the percentage that the increased salary represents, or $28,750 divided by 107.5%. Since 107.5% is equal to 107.5 over 100, we are actually dividing by 1.075, and the original salary to the nearest penny is $26,744.19. To find a percentage increase of a number, divide the amount of the increase by the original amount, then multiply by 100%. Fred received a $5,000 per year salary increase. If his salary before the increase was $42,500, what was the percentage increase? As a function of his original salary, the $5,000 is $5,000 over $42,500, which is equivalent to about 0.11765 to five decimal places. The percentage increase is 0.11765 times 100%, or 11.765%, or 11.8%, rounded to one decimal place. If the rent for an apartment increases to $850 per month from $775 per month, how much was the percentage increase? The difference between the new rent and the old rent is $850 minus $775, or $75. So the percentage increase is $75 divided by $775 times 100%, about 0 0.09677 times 100%, or 9.7% rounded to one decimal place. To find a percentage decrease of a number, divide the amount of the decrease by the original amount, then multiply by 100%. On March 1, 2011, Josh's savings account balance was $12,442.12. On March 1, 2012, his account balance was $7,327.47. How much was the percentage decrease? The decrease in the balance was $12,442.12 minus $7,327.47, or $5,114.65. The percentage decrease was $5,114.65 over $12,442.12 times 100%, or about 0 0.41107 times 100%, or 41% rounded to the nearest whole number. Verona sold his house for $225,000 at a loss of 7%. How much did he pay for the house? $225,000 is 93%. 100% minus 7% of Verna's purchase price, PP. So $225,000 is equal to 93% times PP. Dividing the selling price by the current value in percentage terms relative to the purchase price, we get $225,000 divided by 93%, which is equal to $225,000 divided by 0.93. So Werner paid $241,935.48 for the house. Francine's boat was valued at $32,500 before the accident and $26,300 after. What was the percentage decrease rounded to one decimal place? The decrease in value was $32,500 minus $26,300 or $6,200. The percentage decrease was $6,200 over $32,500 times 100%, which is about 0 0.1907 times 100%, or 19.1% rounded to one decimal place. Jake sold his house to Izzy at a gain of 14%.
If Izzy had to sell the house to Bruce for $325,000 at a loss of 9%, what was Jake's purchase price? $325,000 represents 91%, 100% minus 9% of Izzy's purchase price. So Izzy purchased the house for $325,000 over 91%, which is equal to $325,000 over 0.91, or $357,142.86 to the nearest penny. $357,142.86 also represents Jake's selling price, or 114%, 100% of which represents Jake's original purchase price plus his 14% gain on the sale. So he bought the house for $357,142.86 divided by 114%, which is equal to $357,142.86 divided by 1.14. So Jake paid $313,283.21 for the house.